So we have seen optimality conditions for uh, simultaneously the primal and the dual problems. So we have uh, we have basically found this this relation in the in the subdifferential of the perturbation function, uh, which guaranteed various things, namely that we have a, a primal solution, a dual solution, and the uh, function values coincide. Uh, but naturally, one is more interested in the primal problem. So it would be very interesting to see under which circumstances uh, the existence of dual solutions is automatic so that uh, we can derive necessary and sufficient conditions, uh, optimality conditions for the primal problem only by just saying, well, a problem in the primal is optimal if and only if there exists a, a, a feasible point for the dual problem such that um, this uh, subdifferential relation holds. And the crucial part here is, of course, of course, this is a uh, this. Uh, they, we have seen that that this gives a, a sufficient condition for the primal problem. Obviously, the the question is when is this necessary? So when is these when when do these um, primal solutions exist exist? And to this end, uh, we want to uh, just have a feeling what these dual solutions means, what the, what the dual solution means in terms of the infimal value function. Okay, so um, the theorem which we will prove now is the following. So let P D be a primal uh, dual pair of optimization problems via the perturbation function phi mapping from H times G to R bar. Okay, um, and let uh, h uh, and and h takes a perturbation variable and returns the 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 optimum of the of the perturbed problem. Um, so it maps from g to r, uh, g to r bar. Sorry, um, b the corresponding in femal value function. Okay, so we have seen that um, that h of zero gives us the optimum of the of the primal problem, and it turns out that the dual solutions gives uh, give us uh, first order information. So they form the sub differential of h of at zero. So they describe how the infimum behaves whenever we perturb slightly around zero. Okay, so the statement precisely is if dh of zero is not equal to the empty set, then uh, the optimal values of P and D coincide and uh, this subdifferential is the uh, set of solutions to D. Okay, so this is the theorem. So basically, uh, this describes what dual solutions means mean in terms of this infimal value function. So what you what you have to take away is that these dual solutions uh, basically give you the subdifferential of this of this uh, infimal value function at zero. So they they describe how this um, function h behaves. Uh, 
around zero, so around zero perturbations. So for smog perturbations, you can you can you can give a you, you can basically have an estimate of, of this, uh, a good estimate of H um, for small perturbations. Okay. So let's prove this. And by the way, we do not require any convexity yet um, or any anything else yet. So this works for very general perturbation functions here, but of course, for very general perturbation functions, this dh of zero might be empty or might be completely impossible to compute or something like that. So, yeah, this is this might not be very useful, but the the theorem itself is valid for any type of perturbation function. All right, so mm, obviously by the properties of H star, we have, whenever we have a B bar in dH of zero, this is equivalent to having H of zero plus H star of B bar equals uh, the inner product between b bar and zero, and this is zero. Okay, so what does this mean? Um, so this in turn is equivalent to, well, h of zero is, uh, we now want to formulate everything in terms of phi instead of the uh, of h, because phi uh, is, is the objective function, or gives us the objective function to p and d. So h of 0 is the infimum overall x in h of phi x 0, okay, plus, and h star of b bar was just um, as we have computed when we introduced the, uh, the dual problem is just phi star of zero and b bar. Okay. And this is again zero. So what does this mean? Well, um, this means that, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe we don't have to we just have to observe that this is always less or equal than, um, yeah, um, maybe. So we have to observe that uh, this is minus the minus minus the the, the objective value for for d or at b bar, of course. And therefore, we 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 just have to observe that this is. Um, well, with the supremum and the infimum, we can give an estimation, but I'm not sure about the sign, so let's let's just write this down so that we can be sure about uh, if we, if we have to write plus or minus or infimum or supremum. Okay, so this is equal to minus phi star of zero and b bar, and you see that this is now exactly the um, the objective function, and this is certainly less or equal than um, uh, the supremum of uh, supremum over b in g of minus pi star zero b. Okay, so because the supremum is always greater or equal than any particular value, and here we take b bar and g because uh, this uh, subdifferential is a subset of g. All right, um, so this is basically something which holds every uh, so holds always um, because this is like very, very uh, like this is like the 
just the properties of the supremum. Now we, we can use another property which always holds. So this is weak uh, duality. And by weak duality, this supremum is less or equal than E infimum over X and H of phi X zero. Okay, so this is uh, what always holds. We have shown that weak duality is always true. Okay, so we have seen that this is equal to this, less or equal than this, less or equal than what we started with. So everything here is equal uh, if and only if um, these, um, this B bar is in D8 of zero. So uh, let's, let's just check everything here. So let's, let's check what we have to prove, actually. So um, if b bar is in dh of 0, then what do we have? Everything here is equal. So we have uh, infimum x in h, phi x 0 is equal to um, supremum b in g minus phi star 0 b. Okay, so this is actually just that the optimal values of p and d coincide. Okay, and And then we have minus phi star 0 b bar is equal to the supremum over b in g minus phi star 0 b bar. Okay, and this means that uh, b bar is a solution to d. Okay, so this all, all follows from this equality here. All right, and now we just have to prove that whenever we have a solution to d, then this is an element of dh of 0, provided that dh of 0 is non-empty. So if, uh, let's say, b hat is in... Uh, is a solution to D, then, then basically we can start again with this here, so minus phi star 0 B hat is equal to supremum over B in G minus phi star 0 b bar. And we have actually shown that whenever we have b bar in uh, dh of 0, then these things coincide here. So they actually, this infimum equals supremum does, does not involve any b bar. So whenever um, this subdifferential of, H, of, subdifferential of h at 0 is non-empty, then these things uh, are equal. So then we can write infimum uh, x in h of um, phi of x0. And this implies, since um, infimum phi, zero f of, uh, phi x0 is equal to minus phi star 0 b bar. So this in turn implies that um, b hat is in dh of 0, as we showed just here in this equivalence. Okay, so this concludes the proof of the theorem 
uh, with the description of the dual solution in terms of the subdifferential of h at zero. So now we, we wonder, of course, how can we guarantee that the subdifferential of h at zero is non-empty and therefore guarantee the existence of dual solutions, guarantee the uh, equality of the function values of the primal and uh, the, the optimal values of the primal and dual problem. Uh, conveniently, we have already proven such a theorem which uh, stated that whenever we have a, con a proper convex function and a point in the interior of the domain, well then the subdifferential at this point is non-empty. And we will use this theorem, of course. Um, but first of all, we have to obviously show the, uh, that um, the, uh, the, all the assertions hold. So the, the first question is, when is h convex? And by the way, the, like, this, uh, this, um, this, this statement, when is this subdifferential here non-empty, uh, you can ob obviously uh, find stronger results than those we will prove in this lecture, but uh, um, then you, you, you have to use stronger um, separation theorems, and basically separation theorems correspond to um, this ex these existence theorems here. So whenever you prove a stronger separation theorem, then you might be able to prove um, a weaker condition for this uh, for for uh, the subdifferential to be non-empty, just as a side note. Okay, so when is H convex um, uh, theorem? Okay, so if phi is convex and convex as a function from h times g to r bar. So this means convexity not, uh, not in each variable separately, but convexity as a function from both variables. So you take the convex combination simultaneously in both variables. Okay, as a function to r, then h is convex. Let's prove this. Well, uh, the proof is uh, the proof here uh, is most simply done via the strict epigraph. So we prove that epi s of h is convex. Okay. So how do we do that? So let y one r one and y two r two be in the strict epigraph of h and lambda between 0 and 1. Okay, what does this mean? Um, that these are in strict epigraph of h. This means that r1 is um, above the above h of um, h of y1. Okay. So, and of course, uh, epigraph, again, as a reminder, epigraph is a subset of, of um, g times r, so r1 and r2 are real numbers, okay? So we can't have plus infinity here. And this is actually why we use the epigraph, okay? So r1 is greater than h of y1, which is the infimum over x in h of phi uh, x y1. Okay, what does this mean? Well, the infimum is less, is, is strictly less than r1. This means, of course, that there exists some x1 in h such that phi x1 y1 is less than r1. Okay, and analogously we have the same thing for r2. Um,
So we find an x2 in H such that phi of x2, y2 is less than r2. Okay, what does this mean? Now we use the convexity of phi and prove that phi of, uh, or we, we, we see that phi of 1 minus lambda x1 plus lambda x2 comma 1 minus lambda y1 plus lambda y2 is less than 1 minus lambda r1 plus lambda r2 and this shows that h evaluated at uh, this uh, evaluated at the last uh, at, the, at the second component, so 1 minus lambda y1 plus lambda y2 is certainly is the infimum over all these values. So over the is the infimum over x and h of um, phi uh, x and well, same 1 minus lambda y1 plus lambda y2. Okay, and this infimum is obviously then also uh, less than 1 minus lambda r1 plus lambda r2. And this shows that um, the epigraph, the strict epigraph of H is convex. So we have assumed that we have these in the strict epigraph. And now we have found that the convex combination of those two points is also in the strict epigraph, and this shows that the strict epigraph of H is convex. Okay, and this concludes our proof and shows that a convex phi convex perturbation function implies a convex infimal value function.